We receive countless amazing photos in the Weather Zone Weather Photography Group on Facebook. However, some of the most outstanding photos of thunderstorms regularly come from an Australian photographer named Bobby Skidmore, aka Mr S Photography. We caught up with Bobby to find out a bit more about how he captures such stunning photos of the weather. So Bobby, where are you based and how long have you been taking weather photos for? Um, I'm just outside White Rock at Red Bank Plains. A lot of people call it the Storm Alley because it's pretty much the uh, Aratula, Tabuna, Bow Desert, back towards Wacol and Rosewood. Um, I started just under five years ago. The first probably six months was just getting to know the camera. When storm season came, I went out and that was pretty nerve-wracking at first, but fun. <laughs> you seem to feature the foreground quite prominently in a lot of your photos. Why is that? It, it makes the photo, the storm better because it gives you some sort of idea of what the area is. Like, you know, if you're over farmland, I've had a lot of people turn around and say, oh, I love that photo. It's great to see the farmers are gonna get some rain today. When I first started, I'd mainly focus on the sky, and people would say it's a great sky. They really wanted to know where you were, what your surroundings were, was it an area that was going to be high impact residents, or is it just open farmland? So it's pretty important to make sure you've got something in the photo besides just the cloud. What was the most interesting weather event that you've captured on camera? The most interesting one probably would have been a storm a couple of years ago, I ended up naming it the Monster in November, and it come down off Warwick, and me and my friend uh, Murray Fox Photography had actually set up probably five hours early, because we looked at the models the day before and thought, okay, we're gonna sit here and camp. And when this storm came down, it looked like something off Tornado Alley. It was just a massive rotating supercell, golf ball and larger hail. You could actually hear the roar even from like 10 kilometers away, you could hear the roar of the hail just clanging in the clouds. And by the time that actually hit where we were, it was moving so fast, we almost couldn't outrun it. And at one stage, we actually were dodging, tr uprooting trees. I got overtaken by a garbage bin while I was on the highway. But after the storms pass, you also get some amazing sunsets and all the, all the wildlife come out. And the, if you're in the farmlands, the cattle, and it's such an amazing thing. Like, as long as you can keep yourself safe. Do you have any tips for people wanting to get into weather photography? Well, obviously you'll need a decent DSLR. or people shoot mirrorless now, but I find wireless remotes are really important because one, when you've got your camera set up on a tripod, it, you might, it may not always be safe to stand with it. So you may want to set your camera up and sit in the safety of your car. Don't don't go standing under pergolas and yeah, then just mainly learn how to shoot your camera in manual because shooting your camera in manual gives you full control over everything you do. And you can look on YouTube for lots of how to start a videos on that. That's how I actually got started. If you can use a zoom lens, it's safer because you can keep yourself at a further distance from the storm and you're not underneath where the strike zone is. And you want to adjust it so that you have a as long an exposure as you can during the day because if you try and react with your finger you're going to know 600 photos and maybe one will have half a lightning strike in it so if you can push for one to two second exposures it makes a big difference if you want to do weather photography the biggest one is get to know what you're looking at on your radar but also get to know your area get to know where if you turn down a road you're not going to get stuck and put yourself in danger so really get to know your area and your camera before you go out because if you just go out you'll be so focused on trying to do something it may put you at risk. If you'd like to see more of Bobby's work you can find him on Facebook and Instagram using the details showing on your screen now. And that's all for today's Weather Pulse. If you've got any feedback or you'd like to share some photos with us you can also send them through to weatherpulse at weatherzone.com.au. Remember if it's happening in weather you'll find it here on Weather Pulse.